After a few sunset salt flat shenanigans, we retired to our cave for the night and whittled away the daylight next to the fire. The next morning, we woke to near freezing temperatures and accumulating cloud cover for another day on the playa. But first, breakfast and fuel. I tell you what, morning coffee and cookies, looking out over the Bolivian salt flats, pretty goddamn spectacular. If I do say so myself. Cheers. Having satisfied our thirst for aimlessness for the time being, we set off for Volcan Tunupa in search of mummies. Our first such effort for the day, somewhere along the flanks of the volcano. From there, south across the salt flats to Colchani and more mummies before returning to Uyuni and refueling for our next adventure south. But before our search even began, we were confronted with more modern monuments to lives lost here on the Salar. Back on dry ground, so to speak, we wound our way through the eerily abandoned streets of Tawa and Coqueza, trying our best to find what was reportedly a museum next to a church containing the mummies of Coqueza. Yeah, this is wild. I don't know what's going on here. It's midday Saturday. We're in the main square of this city and it's completely abandoned. <laughs> There's not a single person out on the streets. All we've seen is a street dog. Well, there's some people. With little information to go off, we were relying on the vague directions of a local guide who simply told us to look out for the small church at the base of the volcano. Oh, this is wild. But as it turns out, there were a few to choose from. Hmm. Oh. What the hell? Oh, wow. It's kind of wild. Hola, buenas tardes. Este es el museo, ¿qué no? Hmm? Museo? Mm, iglesias. Iglesias? Ah, ah, iglesitas. Y abierto mañana, ¿sí? Mm, no, 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 sí, cerrado está. No hay gente aquí, por eso cerrado. ¿En serio? Ah. Ok. Ah. Bien. Ok, muchas gracias. Yeah. Chao, chao. What in the world? 
This is wild. But it was soon apparent that our presence wasn't welcomed by everyone. Hola. No? No, se puede, no, se puede. no, it's no museum? No, 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 no. No se puede. Okay, I say English. See? Okay. Put on. Fair game, since we are, after all, a couple of uninvited, unannounced foreigners on a hulking two wheeled contraption poking around for no particular reason. Put on? A coquese está yendo en otra comunidad. ¿Y dónde está el museo? ¿Museo? ¿Qué cosa? El museo. Museo, por eso, ahí es. Museo? Ahí es. Ahí es? Ah, ok. Ahí tiene que ir. Perfecto, gracias. But after a bit of a tongue lashing. Por ahí nomás se sale, ahí directo, en todo el camino está. Ok, perfecto. Our new friend was able to point us in the direction of the museum. Not too happy. Yep. He said anything to you? Nope. No? Get out of here somehow. Buen día. ¿Cómo está? Oh, bien, bien, gracias. ¿Usted? Igualmente. ¿Quién cuál? Quiere subir arriba. ¿Es un museo o qué no? ¿Museo? Sí. ¿Sí? Tiene que pagar el ticket que cuesta 30 bolivianos. All right. It took us a minute. <laughs> All right. After paying for our entries, we rode the steep, rocky road to the parking area, where our guide would lead us on a short hike to the chulpa, or funerary. Hey, what's up, brother? Hey. familia cultura uruchipaya los niños eh, tienen, eh, tenían una edad cuando murieron de 5 o 7 años mamá de 40 años y la muchacha de 22 años aproximadamente ¿no? la posición fetal es por la reencarnación ¿no? de volver a nacer espiritualmente posición original these mummies dating back to 1200 BC, are remarkably well preserved. Due to the arid environment and lack of UV exposure in the cave, at over 3000 years old, clothes, hair, and some tissue is still visible on the skeletal remains of the Coqueza mummies. After our tour, we descended into town for a brief reunion with our Thai friends before racing them across the salt flats toward Uyuni. 
Our, our friends have come okay. with with Coca Cola and beer mm -hmm. and water. <laughs> Thank you guys. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> you guys are the best. <laughs> Where their tour would end, but our fun was just beginning. The salt flats, vast, empty, and awe-inspiring, unfortunately, often inspire stupidity. While there are seemingly no official records, a perfunctory search online revealed a startling 18 deaths in the span of only a few months in 2008. Many more recent fatalities involving tourists killed in rollover accidents have been attributed to overzealous and sometimes alcohol-fueled guides. Other more moto-centric traditions, including riding naked or riding flat out for one minute with your eyes closed, certainly help increase one's chances of joining the unofficial list of casualties. Not necessarily our style, but hey, whatever floats your boat. You're a hole. It's like three feet deep. You don't want to hit that. Just don't expect us to pick rock salt out of your ass cheeks if things don't work out. And speaking of stupidity, the playa's beautiful and mesmerizing geometric surface is so vast and unobstructed that flat earth theorists cite it as proof positive that the earth could not possibly be round. But as we know, looks can be deceiving. And as we would soon learn, shortcuts on the Salar can be dangerous. It's either that or that, but let's keep an eye on it. We're out in the middle of nowhere. Hopefully this stuff is firm. Uh-oh, yep. It's getting thin over here. You feel that? Yeah, we're starting to break through. We gotta get back to the other side. The salt crust can vary from several meters to just a few centimeters thick, forming a wafer thin blanket over a thick alkali mud that is best avoided. You can see the big mud shoal over there. So I'm just going to get back on. I think this is a road. I'm going to get back on a road. So despite Chad's efforts to draw a straight line between A and B, we were forced to take the long way around to the official access road on our way to our final detour of the day. A relatively new and decidedly posh hotel at the edge of the playa, and reportedly within walking distance of another funerary containing more mummies. But as it turns out, we were late to the party. We were told to come to a particular location and look around, and we did, to no avail, and so we started asking around, and we found out that uh, the mummies were actually stolen. Yeah, it seems like there are uh, maybe some body thieves and grave robbers um, with uh, nefarious purposes. So with a fresh mystery on our hands, rife with stories of Pachamama and black magic, we jumped back on the highway and made a beeline to the first car wash we could find. before joining the festivities back in Uyuni.
El vicio pesa pesado, no pinche pesado. Bonita la moto. Ya, yeah, gracias, muchas gracias. <laughs> yeah, okay. Uh, uh, pon el porno. Porno? No, there's no porno. No, no hay porno. No, no hay porno. Ya, ya, <laughs> right. yeah, yeah, chao. Tengo buena noche. <laughs> Peace. <laughs> chao, chao. <laughs> porno. We woke early the next morning and began preparations for our ride south to Reserva Eduardo Avaroa via the notorious Laguna's route. But today, fuel just so happens to be an issue. Hola, ¿cómo está? No, Nada. So we joined forces with a couple of fellow moto travelers for a rousing game of musical gas stations. Well, I had to get a line there. People waiting for diesel. Gasolina, aquí or acá? No hay gasolina. Aquí a la vueltita, por favor. Aquí vamos a tardar en descargar. Otro? Sí, por favor. Okay, yeah. Todavía se ha acabado, por eso están esperando. Claro, claro. Por favor. All right. And by the time we finally managed to find fuel, we're on the road much later than expected. Now, I don't really care about what's cheap, I just care about what's available. Yeah, that's true. I don't want to just throw a few liters in here and get down to San Cristobal and find out that they're closed on Sunday or... Uh, we still need like uh, extra fuel, it's not enough. Oh yeah, I know, but I'd rather need six liters of fuel than, than 20. Back on the tarmac, the plan for the next few days would begin with packing as much fuel as possible in San Cristobal, the final fuel station on Highway 701, before departing the pavement around Via Alota. From there, a maze of road construction and detours would take us far off the map, into the reserve, and onto what was supposed to be the Laguna's route. Hi. How are you guys doing? But if we've learned anything from John Steinbeck, it's that the best laid plans of mice and men often go awry. And if we learned anything from our month in Bolivia, it's that GPS and Google Maps are likely to get you killed. Ha! Huh, dirt sunrise. We arrived in San Cristobal. Hey! What's up, guys? The former stomping grounds of our friends at Dirt Sunrise. Ah, uh, very cool. I'm in good company. Only to discover that the last chance for gas was closed for lunch. Another 45 minutes worth of sunlight down the drain. Topped off and on the road, we dodged a few wayward alpaca on our way to the sleepy Via Alota, where we departed the asphalt once and for all. But no sooner were we on the dirt than we were off the map. So here's the road, or at least what's left of it. Oh man, this is just a complete mess out here. Map says one thing, GPS says something completely different, but they've completely rewrited all the roads. <laughs> they've got detours and deviations and nothing jive. But, and, and now I, I have no idea where the hell we are either because we're supposed to be going this way and the roads, the new detour roads take us that way, so.
Bobbing and weaving our way through a non-stop network of detours, we welcomed the steady flow of oncoming traffic, if only to confirm that we might be on the right track. Steadily gaining altitude through the pocketed sandstone formations and hoodoos of the Bolivian Altiplano. We fought our way through dust, sand, and more dead ends before reaching the junction to Laguna Colorada, our goal for the evening. All right, public service announcement. This is the new junction to Laguna Colorada, right here which happens to be about six kilometers away from the junction that showed on the GPS and about a week away from the junction that showed on the paper map. Rising and falling over passes, through canyons, to the shores of Pastos Grandes. We stopped to take in the ever-changing scenery of this remote wilderness as the sun fell low and our shadows grew long. Before arriving at a semi-abandoned way station that served as a base camp for road crews, mining concessions, and geothermal plants operating in and around the park. And eventually, after what had already been a long day, a ranger station. Buenas tardes, amigos. Buenas tardes, ¿cómo está? Bien, gracias. Bien. Para ingresar al Parque Nacional hay que registrarse acá y pagar 150 por el ticket y para ingresar al parque. Perfecto. Whereupon paying our entry fee and attempting to ascertain our location on the map, we were informed that the road we were on, including the ranger station itself, were not actually on the map that was included with our entry. We were also informed that the hospedaje in which we had planned to spend the night was unsafe for some undisclosed reason, but that there was another hostel a mere 30 kilometers up the road. Rose, I don't know how it could be washboard and sand at the same time. Bullsh Forging into the waning daylight across the washboard roads and deep sand of whatever road this was, Chad was doing his best to stay one step ahead of the approaching void of nightfall. But after 30 kilometers, all that was to be found was a road sign at another junction that did not exist. No, this is even on the fucking map. Oh, jeez. So Chad elected to take the road toward Laguna Colorada, our only real point of reference, and the unsafe hospedaje. But as night fell, 
and temperatures plummeted. Thank <laughs> you. 